Right. Um, with a late one tonight because, uh, well, I got bored really. Um, I finished setting up the temporary, uh, what do you call it, Venus OS device on the caravan today and I fired up the caravan. Um, tripped over myself about a billion times so I forgot where I was. But um, long story short, uh, it's up and running. Um, one of the things that I intend to do with the caravan, and this is not the way I intend to do it, but I'm sure someone's going to suggest it, is I want to share power between the caravan and the house. So um, on the screen at the moment, on the far right, I've got the house. Um, I plug the um, I plug the monitor that monitors the house the solar into the uh, into the servo in the shed. So you can see the PV inverter there showing up. It's not connected. It's running off off grid at the moment. Um, Long story short, we've got 2,900 watts running out of the house at the moment. We're at 70%, so at that rate, we're, we're going to run this battery out pretty quick. The caravan, on the other hand, is doing literally nothing. So if I just um, jump back here, it's at 86%, which is where we left it this afternoon. It's doing bugger all. Um, it's running ESS, so it's not trying to charge. It's currently plugged into the house, so this 50 watts is actually coming out of the battery bank on the house. And, barely, and it's barely doing anything. Um, now the thing is, this grid set point is quite important because this is how uh, the inverter stays uh, locked with the grid so that if it needs to dump a load it can do it um, with, with reasonable urgency. Um, so you don't ever want that number to be zero. So that's set just here, this grid set point. Now that can be a positive number or a negative number, which is really handy. So if you look here that we've got 1808 air, uh, watts going out at the moment, if I change this to a negative number so let's go say negative 200 click over here we should see in the next 30 seconds or so uh, hopefully less because uh, won't be very um, there it goes we've just dropped off 200 watts now let's drop that by another 200 watts now effectively what's happening is um, the multi plus in the caravan is trying to stay in sync with the quattro that's in the shed um, so it's either going to draw some current or it's going to push some current back to keep the, the phases aligned with one another now that's an interesting feature because if you were trying to back feed the grid at a key time you could probably adjust this setting right um, so we're pushing back 400 and we've offset x so let's just change that back to 50 in the positive and we will, actually we'll go 100, eh? Why not? We'll suddenly see a load come onto the uh, uh, onto the Quattro. Just take a second for it to adjust. There it goes. All right, so what we're going to do, this is a little diagram of what we got. I've got 90 kilowatts in the shed and I've got 30 kilowatts in the caravan. Um, what I want to do, and this isn't how I'm going to achieve it, but just for the sake of the video, this is, um, this is how it's going to be set up tonight. We want two thirds of the load to come from here and one third to come from here. So this one will discharge slightly less than this one, but what we're going to do is we're only going to do it during a, a certain block of time at night. Um, and we're going to do it with MQTT. So back to no red as uh, just like before. Um, this is the stat. These are the stats that come out of the uh, out of the servo, and what you find is. Um, you need to send a keep alive to get it to produce all the messages you want. I think you just send it zero from memory. I always forget. Um, zero equals zero. Oh, I can't remember. Let me go. Let me go and find my. Um, let me go and find my keep alive message. Hey, oh god, I hope I'd save that. Don't look at my ugly. There we go. All right, so we've got a part. There we go. Keep alive. So I'll we'll send that. That, ah, there we go. Now it's come to life. What was it? Let's have a look. It is System Zero Serial. Hmm, weird. Whatever. Anyway, we've uh, we've just woken it up and it's produced all this information for us. Now, under... Let's see if I can remember this. And I probably will not. Um, it's right here. So we've got... Uh, in this case, it's N, the serial number, or the unique ID settings zero and we should have a grid set point here somewhere 
uh, AC power set point right there, which should reflect what we're seeing here, which is. So let's copy that um, here, go to publish, and we want to send it a value of. And what we're looking for here is this grid set point here to change to 50. Once we publish, um, oh, I'm an idiot. You've got to change the root from N to W if you want to write a value. There it goes. As soon as we published, it went down to 50. So that's pretty interesting, right? That means that if I want to send it negative 50 and I want to send power back to the shed, I can send it negative 50 and it's going to send 50 watts back to the shed. Um, without pointing out the obvious that is incredibly dangerous potentially incredibly dangerous um if you interfere with this in a way that you shouldn't or you do some unforeseen thing this is this could be catastrophic um but we're only going to do this just as a test just quickly now i'm not going to leave it like this and, and for reasons i'll explain shortly um so to make this happen automatically we need to one know what the house's sock is so we're going to grab the house's sock from the servo controller in the shed and we're going to write it to a global variable called global house sock right so that's the global house's state of charge we're going to store that as a variable that'll be accessible to all of these functions the next one is what is the consumption inside of the house right now now this will be interesting and we'll come back to it later why I think it'll be interesting, but we're, we're going to write, we're going to do the same thing we did with the sock. We're going to write the global consumption variable. The next one is grab the current AC set point from the van, right? Now I didn't, I didn't append van into the, um, into the variable name, but it's the only one we're grabbing. Then we've got the van sock, right? So this one is not coming from the servo control in the shed. It's coming from the Pi servo, which is installed in the van. And this one is also coming from the Pi servo. Um, in order to make this work, we need to trigger this function to happen, which is going to retrieve the all the four global variables that we save, so the global set point, the consumption, the house sock, and the global van sock. We've determined that we're not going to start the power sharing until after eight o'clock. Oh, sorry, six o'clock at night, so eighteen hundred hours, and we're going to end it by five o'clock in the morning. The van has to have a sock of at least twenty percent in order for this to occur and the house sock has to drop below 90. We don't need to do this sort of power sharing when there's nowhere for the power to go. Um, and then we've got an empty object for the payload. We're going to default that payload to 50 watts, which is what it should be here anyway. So let's just chuck him back onto 50 for the sake of um, keeping it all the same. And the first thing we're going to do is if this function gets called before any of those variables are defined, we're not going to do anything. Okay, if the global consumption is greater than 600, yep, we're going to do something about it because below that, we don't want to push power backwards and forwards because the inverter might not have anywhere for it to go. We might have an AC coupled power source that is producing power but not reporting back to the Victron. And the last thing that we need to do is have the Victron have a surplus of power. So if there's not more than 600, we're, we're going to, you know, well, if there is more than 600 of um, consumption, we're going to act on it. Um, this is where we do the check to make sure that the two batteries um, either have enough capacity or they've dropped to the appropriate capacity for us to start the power sharing. We're going to grab today's date, take the hour out of it because we don't actually need the date. So we could have just, we could have landed that and made that all one line. But to make it easier to read, I'm happy for it to be on two lines. Uh, if the current hour is greater than the night start, so if it's after the night start hour and if it's before the morning end hour, we're good to go. Um, if the global set point is less than negative 100, which means we've already started this process off once before and, and we're already power sharing, or we're at 50, so we're happy. If we're at some arbitrary number in between, I've, I've left that space there so that we could throw an error later and, and put, the, uh, put the inverter into a state where it will not try to change this number um, or it'll default it back to 50 because that's what our default value is up there which kind of makes this redundant but I'll 
yeah, I haven't fleshed it out as deeply as I'd like to. Um, we're going to take the power consumption and we're going to divide it in two because effectively it will bounce up and down a couple of times. The first time that we set this, it'll, the number will be wrong, but after three or four sets, it'll it'll roughly work out to be a third. Once this thing, uh, once the caravan is outputting um, whatever 50% of this global consumption is, once it starts to apply that power, it will bounce around, but then it'll level out and we'll effectively end up with about a third of the consumption coming from the, sh uh, from the caravan. Um, I was doing some extra error checking here and I got rid of it. Um, I'm just applying the minus the negative of the difference so in this case it will be if it was 800 watts out of 1600 we would end up with 800 as the difference and we're going to send negative 800 as the payload again looking to put in some more error handling there uh didn't really get around to it so we're, we're just going to I've, I've identified that this is not going to work the way i want it to so um well for my use case it works just fine but it just won't work for my use case um, then we're going to return it. If any errors have happened in the meanwhile, we'll just default back to our 50, which was the 50 up here. But if anything's gone wrong during that time, uh, we just assume we're going back to 50. All right. So that's going to send a payload of the message payload, which is of the value 50. All right. So cool. Happy with that. Um, this is a button that I, I set just to set it back to 50. We don't really need it. I'm going to wake the servo controller up. Um, I'm going to have a look at the global context. Oh, hang on. I've got to hit deploy. Context data. Oh, what's going on? Why is my... Um... Mm, weird. Okay. Um, never had to press that refresh button before. That's strange. All right. Once we've got global consumption here, which is at 1771 watts, I refresh that, yeah, 747. We've got a global sock of 69, so the house is at 69. Our global, uh, sorry, our, our set point is at 50 watts, which we can confirm it is at 50 watts, and the caravan is at 85.9. So all of those uh, tell me that we should start to set this, all the conditions are true for this function to, to work correctly. So what I'm going to do is when the power consumption changes, I'm going to trigger this function to run. We've already got 870 over here. So if I jump back to the caravan, um, when I find it, so the house's power has suddenly dropped to 928, 816. You can see that it's slowly but surely balancing out. This will find its way so it's only one third. It seems weird to, do, uh, to cut this number in half and then keep on sending it, but it just eventually just plateaus out and figures out where, what's a safe spot that's pretty cool huh so that means we're now sending 580 watt of uh, 580 watts back out of the ac input of the multi plus two and it's being received by the quattro or more accurately it's being received by devices being powered by the quattro um, so let me just remove that link I will deploy that will effectively fix the number where it's at and then we're going to send the 50 watt um, message again so let me just all right this should end it there we go it's already dropping the power consumption here will start to come up so we're at four watts over here eventually this will jump back up to uh, 50 watts as it as it settles in and we will just bring this over here so it makes it clear to see drag this down redeploy make sure we haven't got any problems here there we go redeployed deployed this should now jump straight back up and our consumption should start to come back down That is excellent. That is working exactly how I intended it to. It'll uh, it'll plateau out. I'm not sure how many times you can write. To, um, I'm not sure how many times you can actually write to the D bus before it'll start to cause problems for the servo controller. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter too much because this is a 
this is not the primary system this is a secondary system that's in the caravan and when the caravan is not present here it will not be participating in the grid anyway so um, I'm hosting this node red in the house so it'll only ever accompany this and if the if it's unable to publish these messages back to the caravan then it really doesn't matter um, now here's the thing I'm not going to use this um, mostly because that would occupy my AC input um, when I've got grid tied solar that this thing could be charging from and so I need the AC input to be attached to the grid tied solar on my house not to the off grid portion of my house um, our grid tied portion is just a bore pump and that's it and, uh, and a 5.5 kilowatt solar system um, the off grid side is the rest of the house so this one's AC input is going to be occupied by the fact it's plugged into the wall and, and able to charge from the surplus energy on our house solar. And I am going to effectively stick some battery charges in between and they are going to pass AC and then DC into the Quattro's batteries. Um, that sounds like an arse about way and it's certainly not efficient, but for my use case, I want the MultiPlus to charge uh, from the surplus grid power not um, and and not occupy that AC input um, but anyway I thought that was cool I thought it was worth sharing um, hopefully that's useful to somebody else who might find themselves in this situation um, I watched uh, off grid garages videos where he's got a Phoenix inverter feeding into a multi plus two Thought well, that's a pretty cool idea um, but again it's a bit useless for us um, when what we're trying to do is combine this power we want 90 kilowatts and 30 kilowatts. We want 120, right? Um, so we're trying to make the most of what we've got. So anyway, I'll, uh, I intend to video this process of um, setting up the logic that will control the charges that will flow power back to our big battery bank um, based on the demands inside the house. The other thing about that is that um, our readings are being obscured um, now because the Quattro is completely unaware that the MultiPlus 2 is having an impact. Um, the danger is also we've got so much AC coupled solar that there's a danger that the uh, multi plus two might overcome the Quattro's ability to, to deal with surges. Um, so there's a rule that you're supposed to stick to that you will not commission more than one to one ratio of VA on your inverter versus watts on your PV. And for all intensive purposes, the multi plus two has become an AC coupled solar here right that this quattro is completely unaware of and that in itself has got dangers um so i wouldn't recommend this solution to anybody i just thought it was an interesting experiment and felt that it was worth sharing anyway thanks for watching i'll uh i'll see you again soon